Hi folks, so today I have been taking a look at an application which I've been meaning to take a look at for quite some time, Gnome Boxes. Now Gnome Boxes is designed to run virtual machines in a somewhat similar capacity to VirtualBox. Now VirtualBox is the application which I've previously used to try out distributions that for one reason or another I wasn't able to install onto bare metal, either my uh, laptop over here or my desktop. Maybe it doesn't fit into my workflow or I just wanted to take a bit of a brief overview or, or whatever. So today, yeah, I've been just basically taking a look at Fedora th using GNOME boxes. And I must say, I'm quite impressed not only with GNOME boxes, but also with Fedora itself. Now, I actually installed Fedora uh, 27 here, and I actually went through the upgrade process to uh, upgrade it to Fedora 28. And I must say, it's really quite a smooth process, and I had no hiccups whatsoever. Now, I know that in a lot of cases, virtual machines tend to be the first places where distributions and software gets tested. So in a lot of capacities, you're not likely to see bugs which might otherwise arise on bare metal installations. But nevertheless, I must say it was a very smooth process and it's actually given me an increased amount of enthusiasm for trying out Fedora maybe on bare metal once again. Now, I have installed it onto my laptop previously with a great deal of success. And when it comes to uh, Fedora, it is one of those distributions that I feel has maybe one of the best balances between adherence to the free software principles and day-to-day -day usability, especially with the newer versions of Fedora. So I'm just going to play around a little bit with Fedora in today's video, uh, just to uh, get to grips, uh, not only with the distribution, of course, but running it through GNOME boxes. Now, as you can see here, I've got NeoFetch, and um, it's uh, Fedora 28 Workstation Edition. Um, it's got the KVM Q uh, QEMU, Q, you know, QMU. Uh, it's got uh, it's got the kernel there. Uh, uptime 19 minutes. That's basically because I just sort of fired it up. Well, 19 minutes ago, or maybe even uh, 24 minutes ago. It's got um, 1,650 packages on. It's running the GNOME 28.3. And I have changed out the theme from Adwaita to Adwaita Dark because it is just a lovely looking, I mean, as you can see here on uh, not only this, but you've got the system monitor here, which is running now at 2.2 uh, gigs of memory. And I'll show you all the applications that I've got here. So it's got a, a significant number of applications here. I installed GNOME MPV to see what the, uh, flat pack integration was with the themes and as you can see it looks uh, really quite nice there so I'll actually just uh, get rid of that because I just wanted to sort of demonstrate um, and I can actually show you that it, I think it is the only flat pack that I've installed thus far uh, yeah and it comes with uh, the uh, platform uh, FFmpeg there uh, to help run with the uh, the application but um, yeah, uh, it, the flat packs work really, really quite well. In fact, I can even take you to the um, flat pack website. And if we just scroll down to the getting uh, get setup guide. Now, even though flat packs do have out of the box support, you do actually have to install the flat hub repository file, which basically is all done through the GUI. So you don't even have to bother with the command line. And then uh, you just, you know, get straight into it and uh, install some apps. Now, I predominantly use Flatpak on the command line, and I do recommend uh, those of you that do like to use Flatpaks uh, to use the command line, because the thing about Flatpaks in general is that they are applications designed to run on a multitude of Linux distributions. Now, each um, distribution has its own way of integrating the Flatpak applications into its installation GUI, and some of them actually do just require you to use the command line. But if you learn how to install and remove and search for flat packages or flat pack packages rather from the command line once you've learned it in one distribution you've effectively learned it for all distributions so it uh, in the long run just makes your life a lot easier if you do learn to use f uh, flat packs from the command line um but yeah, it works really quite nicely out of the box support integration is is fine um and um yeah, really quite happy with that so far. So anyway, I was, as I was saying earlier on, um, in fact, I even need to pull up the software center here. Uh, it has one of the best balances between the free software principles 
and day-to-day -day, uh, usability because it actually allows you on first run to select whether or not you want to add in the RPM Fusion repository, which runs uh, its proprietary, you know, the proprietary elements of its software. That's things like codecs and uh, certain drivers and certain other applications, which are non-free. But a lot of people have, have sort of come to depend on um, because there's for one reason or another industry standard or there is no uh, free software equivalent there uh, and as you can see here it's got the uh, non-free nvidia driver which i've currently disabled because of course i'm running it in a virtual machine and it is running the gnome software center which is uh, i mean this is a great software center um and it's been you know um around for quite some time now um but it is great and i do have to say and i think there are a fair number of people who will agree with me when i say this that fedora probably have the best gnome um, desktop um, implementation. Uh, it's it always seems smooth. Um, a lot of it are, is is uh, generally quite uh, uh, sort of default and, and out of the box when it comes to GNOME. But I, as I understand it, Fedora and uh, GNOME actually work quite closely together um, to actually. Um, you know, to actually build such a great uh, integration between the desktop environment and the overall operating system itself. And to be honest as well, when it comes to other um, respins of Fedora, they've actually, they're, they're actually really quite good as well. And if you're not a fan of GNOME, I can actually recommend the LXQT respin of Fedora, which um, I tried out. I think there's even a review of it on this channel. And that was really quite good if you're looking for something a little bit more lightweight, but it's a wonderful implementation. So what else is there? Uh, I've pulled up uh, Maps, which is installed by default. Uh, this is a lovely little tool. Uh, it, I mean, Maps, you know, it's sort of the, uh, the clue is in the name there. Uh, what else is there? Uh, oh, and I've got uh, Evolution here, which is, this is integrated really quite well into GNOME. You've got the calendar and all that kind of stuff up here with the notifications. The notifications, um, as usual in GNOME, are really quite um, straightforward. There's a little um, dot that appears right by the, uh, the time, which outlines when there is a notification that you can read. Um, and yeah, evolution. So if I were to be, if I were to have the kind of workflow that um, would benefit from having a desktop email client, uh, it would integrate incredibly well with this system. Um, now, what I did do is I did install the tweak tool. Now, the tweak tool does not um, is not installed by default. There it is. But it is easy enough to install, very straightforward. And as you can see, that's how I, I got the uh, Adway to Dark theme. Uh, there are also a few other um, examples. For example, I, I put the date up the top there as well because it's useful to have the date. Actually, a lot of my file names are, you know, they, they are specifically dated. Um, and uh, yeah, like I, I gotta say, I do quite like the dark theme of Edwaiter as well. I know that it's not exactly a high contrast theme, uh, so if you do have some kind of visual impairment, then there is um, there could be some issues there. But uh, but it comes with the light theme as uh, as you know out of the box. Um, what else is there? There is. Um, Oh yes, there. There's. Uh, if we go, I think is it devices and displays. Yeah. So it comes, of course, with Nightlight built in. Uh, Nightlight um, is a fantastic uh, tool. It's basically it changes the hue of the overall desktop to correspond with the time of day. So it adds a slight um, orange hue to the uh, to the desktop uh, in the evenings and, of course, early mornings. Uh, so it doesn't artificially keep you awake. So it doesn't sort of uh, blast that blue light into your eyes, which uh, which can sort of keep you up all hours of the night, um, which is uh, particularly useful for me. So, um, yeah, other than that, I don't think there's too much to say. Um, I've got the, uh, the process manager here, uh, the process monitor here, rather. And um, as you can see, it's... Uh, sort of idling now with 2.1 gigabytes, which is uh, it's not the 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 lowest that I've seen for a desktop with this kind of stuff, but um, but it is what it is. So uh, I mean, I've got um, a significant amount of memory to spare. I've allocated um, 
five gigs to it and actually I was running this machine with two gigs of memory and it was making good use of the swap and I wasn't noticing any noticeable slowdown with it so it, it, even though um, it was using all of the memory the um, I didn't notice any kind of performance hit when it came to uh, breaking into the swap partition. Now I don't know if that's because I've got a solid state hard drive which probably does help in these kind of matters but um, but nevertheless, that uh, it was still a smooth and pleasant experience. And I must say, even though I'm running this in a virtual machine, it does feel pretty smooth. It does feel pretty smooth. So yeah, overall, uh, generally a pretty enjoyable experience. Um, Fedora has always, in my mind, been a strong distribution. Um, and a good balance between free software uh, principles and uh, overall functionality and usability. And I have to say it is incredibly tempting to install this onto bare metal to see how I might go along with it uh, long term. But overall I think that uh, Fedora has, has been a strong distribution ever since that I picked it up. Oh, I think it was maybe 2006 when I first started uh, using Fedora on bare metal for the first time. It was, a it was a strong distribution then, and it's a strong distribution now. And it is certainly one of the uh, distributions that I would recommend as well. And it's only gotten better over time. I was particularly impressed with how smooth the upgrade tr uh, transition was from uh, 27 to 28. Um, it basically, uh, I went into the upgrades tab, and it said, there is a new version of Fedora available. I clicked an install button. Um, it downloaded the install. It uh, restarted the machine. It installed the updates. And before I knew it, it was uh, upgraded to Fedora 28. So even though it, uh, Fedora uh, doesn't have a long-term support release in the same way that the Ubuntu desktop uh, distributions have, it seems that upgrading is a seamless enough process that I might be able to overlook it and um, and uh, yeah impressive all the way through and I look forward to uh, to seeing how Fedora carries on but like I say it was a strong distribution in 2006 it's a strong distribution today Fedora has consistently managed to impress me and it's nice to have uh, this distribution uh, staying around so um, and of course on top of that uh, Gnome Boxes is nice and easy to use and it does the job at least for me every bit as much as VirtualBox. I have been chatting about it with some of you guys over on Mastodon and some of you say that when it comes to the more advanced features um, VirtualBox is still the place to go but I have a pretty simple use case scenario here and Gnome Boxes I think I'm going to keep trying it. I think I'm going to keep trying it. Now Gnome Boxes is av available as a, as a flat pack if you guys want to try it yourself. Um, but I believe it's also available in a significant... In fact, I think that it's even available. Uh, yes, it is. Oop. It's even available here as a uh, as an application within the virtual machine. Boxes within boxes. Um, but yes, absolutely uh, fantastic distribution as always. Only gets easier and more accessible as the years go on. But um, yeah wonderful so i think that's about it from me today uh let me know if you've got any thoughts down in the comment section below i will have to look at maybe installing if not fedora 28 then maybe fedora 29 on on some bare metal somewhere because this is uh you know it's uh, it's a distribution that only, only keeps getting better and i can't sing its praises highly enough so and also yeah a uh, great integrate integration with flat packs as well uh like i say i've predominantly been using them on the command line but the gnome mpv uh just sort of integrates with the system incredibly well and um and it's nice to have a, a good selection. There is a great selection of applications in the FlatHub store, and it is expanding by the day. So uh, it's, you know, it, it, even if Fedora native repositories don't have your particular software of choice, and most of the time they, they tend to, um, then there is always the FlatHub, which tends to fill in any of the gaps, at least it does for me. So yeah, that's about it for me today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, and I'll put a... Um, uh, a link to the uh, other reviews of other distributions in the end screen here as well um, but yeah that's about it for me today thank you very much for watching and until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome take care now